clinically grade one, I think it is probably uh, uh, too young, far too young to to, to get the best. Okay, that's just but, um. But from what it is now, it's not not really. Got a bit of sun coming through the window there. Okay, let me just turn that down. So this is a uh, the mock-up of the 20 meter receiver that I want to use for the the 20 meter portable rig. Um, so I'm pretty happy with the way it's set up. Um, you know, it's it's not an SDR rig. It's not a flex. What is it? Flex 5000, whatever those big rigs are. But you know, this is just a a simple rig that um, I want to take out into the bush. Uh, and again, uh, keeping it simple. In, in, in the spirit of what I'm trying to achieve with a lot of these videos is to uh, encourage others to give it a go. <clears throat> Again, not a tutorial, this is purely a video log of what I've done and what I'm playing with and I guess trying to get a bit of an insight into what at least I'm thinking uh, and then putting it together. So just to very quickly go through what I have done and then we'll look at this, the circuits for, um, or the diagrams, more the point for the new circuits and we'll go from there. So. As I say, this is uh, in the receiver configuration. Um, my thinking is, and what I'd like to do, is try something a little bit different with this rig. Um, again, I want to have it in such a way that the uh, RF is always going through the IF amp, through the filter, and back through the second IF amp in this direction. Uh, in the past, um, I have had a switching relay here. So between transmit and receive, RF gets swapped across to the, always to do that. But I've had problems in the past where um, I've had feedback as a result of uh, the relay contacts being too close together for the inputs and the outputs. Um, so what I'm going to try on this one here is a little bit different. Um, what I'm going to do here <coughs> is have it that this mixer here on receive is our standard mixer, which drops our RF down to our IF. Uh, but on transmit, it'll become the... Um, the the modulator uh, the balance modulator so therefore and I'll, in fact I'll, I'll describe the circuit first and we'll double back on that one it's probably the easiest and more logical way of doing it so right in terms of the receiver here RF is coming through the uh, bandpass filter and it is uh, this particular filter here and we'll look at the um, the maths for that um, comes out of the back of SSDRA um, and all I've done now is just uh, converted it to use smaller toroids, more suitable for a portable rig. Um, that is currently tuned for 14.1, but um, I will actually bump that up to about 14.15, so halfway um, up the, the 20 meter band. So RF is coming through there. Um, added benefit too is it filters out all of the, uh, the broadcast band into the antenna amplifier. That amplifier there is using the J310 amp that we looked at a couple of videos back. Um, that seemed to work really well and was low noise for what I could see. Um, so that sort of decided to, well more than point, I decided to, to reuse that. Um, <clears throat> that's then going into um, our mixer here. Uh, this is a Tough 3 which was very kindly given to me. So again, thank you very much. Uh, nice and small 7 dBm device. Um, which will be just really ideal and perfect for, for the tramping rig, uh, nice and small. So that's being mixed with um, our VFO frequency coming out of the SI5351. So very quickly sort of looking at the circuit here. Um, you, you might recognize this as being very similar to the CW rig, uh, and it is. Um, I thought that seemed to work really well with the ability through this little switch here to cycle uh, the intensity, which in turn is actually reducing the amount of current coming off the battery all the way down to zero. Um, the radio is still running here, but just the display is turned off to save um, battery voltage or uh, capacity current, um, and then back up to full volume again. Uh, in terms of uh, being able to change the frequency, uh, decide to stick with what we did last time. Uh, normally, it changes the one kilohertz. Um, but by pressing down on the rotor encoder and then doing one rotate in either direction, doesn't matter, the little LED comes on there, which to signifies when we're on to fine tune. So the 100 hertz now gets changed. And when you fine tuned it, again, repeat, rotate, and then you're back into coarse tuning. Uh, so I've stuck with that. Um, and as I just mentioned before, uh, and I'll get back to it, 
what I'm going to do, I'm going to sense the PTT on the Arduino and I'm going to tell the Arduino uh, on transmit to swap over the outputs of the what was the VFO and the BFO. So the BFO will then come across this side and the VFO will come across to here which will then allow me to, um, to switch um, this mixer here from um, the first mixer down to the product detector and so again to a balanced modulator and then this one over here which normally would be the product detector will then become the, um, the mixer to mix it up to the RF. So on receive RF comes out of the antenna our amplifier into the mixer gets mixed with our VFO and gets mixed down to our intermediate frequency uh, which is 9 megahertz and then goes through um, a standard little um, 3904 amplifier um, <clears throat> bumping that up roughly around 23 odd 24 dB uh, that's then going into our crystal filter out the other side into exactly the same stage again and we'll look at the maths on that um, and I'll just explain now the, the, the subtle differences the, the base amplifier itself is exactly the same um, on both sides however on the let's say the input side or the first IF amplifier um, I've modified what I'm generically calling the, the emitter circuit and again we'll look at the maths in a sec to uh, present to the um, mixer here 50 ohms so we're just providing a little bit more resistance on the emitter to, to, to artificially make that 50 ohms for the filter on the output side uh, trying to present to the collector of the, uh, the 2N3904 200 ohms um, so this transformer here is, is transforming the 500 ohms for the filter down to 200 ohms for the, um, for the amplifier's output on the second IF um, same approach but now trying to uh, sh um, present to the crystal filter 500 ohms for matching and then on the output side it's now 50 ohms for the, the um, balance modulator say so again the product detector um, and that's transforming 50 up to 200 for the output of the, the IFM so into that um, product detector gets mixed with the B frequency oscillator um, LO signal and then output is um, our audio frequency and into our audio frequency amplifier which at the moment is just an, LM, an LM380 amplifier I'm still thinking about what I'm going to do with that one um, I'll probably keep it, it may look to rebuild it just to remove some of the, uh, the dead space to make it a little bit smaller, we'll see what happens there uh, at the moment um, not applying any uh, filtering by way of audio frequency filtering to that signal before it gets amplified and just relying purely on the fact that the um, crystal filter has a 2700 hertz uh, bandwidth so that's dictating what the overall uh, bandwidth will be for the audio coming out of that um, and that seems to work just fine anyway so I just mentioned before that what I want to do is have the RF always going through the crystal, the crystal filter in this direction um, but I want to do it in such a way that I'm not um, having a relay here, a single relay swapping the RF backwards and forwards uh, in an effort to try and get around the problem I've had in the past of um, feedback. So what I'm going to do in this particular configuration um, is on receive, this will be the configuration obviously, uh, and then on transmit um, I'm going to have a relay sitting here and a little relay sitting here that is going to on transmit um, present to the this mixer here the audio from the microphone and then another little read over here which will then um, send that uh, RF which is now at our, our desired transmit frequency um, across to the uh, across to the um, power amplifier so got a little bit of switching going on there but I think that'll be work quite well and I just sort of on paper I can't see where I'm going to have RF uh, for example at 9 megahertz being close to here that would then potentially go back around uh, the IF module um, causing uh, feedback so we'll give that a go and then the only other part which needs to be done is the uh, Arduino here will sense the PTT line and then just invert the outputs now when I say invert the outputs um, clock zero here which is normally a VFO will become the beat frequency oscillator ready for transmit and then what clock to, which is traditionally on our receive, the beat frequency oscillator will then become the VFO. 
so it's nice and easy to do it's just it, it's, it's simple to do um, so that's the other part of the equation to make this particular uh, configuration work so that's the plan so we'll give it a go and um, and uh, we'll see what happens right so let's just have a quick look at some of the um, some of the design so we mentioned um, that the antenna amplifier was based around the J3T amp we did a while back. Um, you may recall this was the maths that we looked at and to determine our, our pinch off and our IDSS um, and then fed that into the calculations. I'm not going to go through this one. Uh, th there's a video up which talked about how this was done um, up on the YouTube. But that's the amplifier there. Um, I acknowledge that the input is sitting at 1 meg at the moment, so it's not an ideal match from a maximum power transfer point of view uh, to our bandpass filter and our, uh, our uh, antenna. But at this stage I'm sort of going to gloss over that and maybe put some more thought into it, but at the moment it, uh, it seems to work well. Right, so in terms of the IF amplifiers, um, so like I say, the, the uh, 9 megahertz amps, um, so what I've elected to do is not run them flat out, but to modify the emitter circuit here in order to uh, present a, a, a different input resistance to, depending on what this is attached to. So it's either going to be the Tough 3, which wants to see 50 ohms, or it's going to be the Crystal Filter, which wants to see 500 ohms. And on the output side of the house, that transformer there, um, the collector half it's always going to see 200 ohms um, as a rule of thumb and then on the output side uh, it's going to be transforming that 200 ohms to either 50 ohms because it's going into the tough 3 or 500 ohms because it's going into the input of the the crystal filter but other than that uh, class A amplifier voltage divider biasing um, like I say with this um, varied or variable I should say emitter circuit <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I'm going to select a uh, quiescent current through the device of 10 milliamps. Um, that's a bit of a compromise, uh, trying to reduce the amount of current draw on the battery uh, to maximise its capacity, and also to on the the beta curves to try and maximise our um, HFE to try and get as much gain as I can out of this um, this stage. Right, so beta DC, I'm going to take the geometric mean of the spec sheet's minimum and maximum HFE for 10 milliamps. So the square root of 100 times 300 equals 173. Um, the calculations for R1, R2 and RE are the same as we've seen several times before. Um, I'm going to just arbitrarily set the emitter voltage to be a tenth of VCC. This is a 12 volt battery, so it's going to be 1.2 volts. So 1.2 volts there divided by the quiescent current through that uh, resistor comes out at 120 ohms. So standard value, that's what we use. For R2 there, the bottom resistor, it's going to be uh, our emitter voltage plus 0.7 for that forward bias junction. And then divide that by 10 times the base current for a nice stiff voltage divider um, biasing there comes out at 3287 ohms, so we use 3.3k as the standard value. R1 there, our top resistor, is going to be VCC, that voltage there, minus the voltage uh, at the base. So we're just we're working out Ohm's law here. So 12 minus 1.7 divided by the current through it, which is now going to be 11 times, because we've got the additional base current being added to the 10 times here. So 10 plus 1 equals 11. So 11 times our base current comes out at 15.884. In other words, we'll use 15K as the standard value. So here goes our 1, 2, 3 uh, resistors, 1, 2, 3, setting the, uh, the bias current for that particular um, device. So now it's a matter of working out what um, this value R needs to be in order to um, present the right input resistance. So there's two things I want to do. So for a start, I'm going to work on the uh, the 50 ohm uh, option. So um, <clears throat> just doubling back a little bit, the input looking into here, we can essentially say that it's approximated by um, our R1 in parallel with R2, 
Why is it in parallel? Because of all the decoupling we've got going on here from an AC point of view. Um, that's a dead short, so we can crowbar this down to the bottom. And looking in here, it'd be R1 in parallel with R2 in parallel with whatever we see looking into here. So it's going to be beta RE. Uh, it's going to be beta RE brackets little RE to take into consideration that uh, junction there and whatever the, um, the resistance here is um, looking back into that device. So that's what we got um, here. Um, <clears throat> so without being modified we've got 0.08 ohms at the moment if we were to assume that this resistor was fully bypassed so that's that's not good enough we need to um, we need to fix that so this is what this next part oh, my apologies this next part here is so our desired 50 um, from a mathematical point of view uh, if we um, rearrange the formula for parallel resistors 1 over 50 equals 1 over 15k or R1 plus 1 over 3.3k, in other words R2, plus 1 over um, beta AC times little re plus whatever x is. Now x is that um, parallel arrangement here of re in parallel with R, uh, noting that um, this is just a DC blocking resistor there, so this R doesn't um, muck up the DC biasing of that um, transistor. And at AC, that's essentially a short, which means we now have RE in parallel with R. So that combination there, I've just notionally called um, X. Now the only other thing which I didn't uh, talk about was beta AC, so 33.3. .3. As we know, beta AC, not DC, AC, is our FT from the spec sheet, our transition frequency, divided by our frequency of operation. Um, this is a 9 megahertz amplifier, so 300 divided by 9 equals 33.3. .3. So coming back down to here, that's what we see here, 33.3. .3. Little re, 26 millivolts divided by our emitter volt, uh, emitter current, more the point, expressed in uh, milliamps. So 26 millivolts divided by 10 is what that value there is, so that's um, little re. Anyway, so if we run through that again and do the maths, uh, X turns out to be 1.5 ohms. So we now know that X, which is a parallel combination between these two, we can then do exactly the same thing, um, this time slightly different expression, just to be a little bit different. Our value of R, that's R here, equals 1 over 1.5, which is the total, minus 1 over 120, that's the existing RE, um, all under 1, or in other words, brackets, the minus 1, comes out at 1 1.8 ohms. So that's a standard value, so we'll use that. So that value there is now going to be 1.8 ohms for the 50 ohm option uh, amplifier. Um, exactly the same logic for 500 ohms. So if we were to run through this, again, I won't go through it now, you'd come out with an X of 18 ohms. Um, and then solving for R, 1 over 18 minus 1 over 120, all to the negative 1, comes out at 21.17 ohms, so we'll use 22 ohms. In other words, R there will be a 22 ohm resistor for the 500 ohm option for that particular amplifier. Um, the next thing is to work out the uh, transformers, the output transformers. Again, uh, two options needed. Uh, we've got 200 ohms to 500, so 500 would be our uh, crystal filter, and the other option is 200 ohms to 50 ohms. So that option there is the output is then feeding into the, the tough three, the mixer. So, um, so to work out n in both cases, n equals 500 divided by 200 for this case, comes out square rooted, comes out at 1.581. Um, so a good value there would be um, 7 to 11 uh, will give us that turns ratio. And then for the 200 to 50, that's our standard one that we use many times, comes out with an n equals 2. Um, and a good option there would be 5 to 10. Um, <clears throat> uh, and all I've done down here, uh, and I won't go into it, is trying to get that rule of thumb where um, the smallest 
winding of those transformers is presenting in terms of inductive reactance that sort of four to five times um, whatever it's attached to. And this I was just double checking down here to make sure that um, I had sufficient, for example, um, that 10 there um, on the output side. I know it's not the smallest winding, but it's on the output side. At 9 megahertz, we come out at 1979 ohms, which is at least 40 times um, 50 that it's being attached to. So that's that's well and truly in excess of what I needed. So that's why that's that's been worked out there. Um, I won't go into that. There was just some other calculations uh, that are irrelevant at this stage of the game. So in terms of the bandpass filter, so that's the antennas coming in through the bandpass filter. Uh, SSDRA, the solid state design for the radio amateur in the appendix, um, has a bit of a cookbook um, bandpass filter circuit there. Um, in this particular case, the inductors, the parallel inductors there were T68-6 devices uh, with 20 turns. Um, I wanted to use a smaller device, uh, a T50-6. So what I did there is um, I worked out in terms of uh, what inductance a T68-6 would have for 20 turns, which comes out at 1.88 microhenries, and then just reverse engineered that one saying, well, okay, given that, if I was to use a T50-6, um, what would that turn out to be? And it was 21.7 turns, so I've just rounded that to 22 turns. So that's what I've actually used in the actual filter itself. Um, the configuration is a two coupling capacitors coming in uh, and then a parallel capacitor uh, in parallel with those two inductors and then a, um, a small capacitor linking those two um, those two filter circuits there. Um, right, so <clears throat> the two CNs there, the two uh, capacitors coming in needed to be 14.7. I've just rounded those to 15 picofarads, which is nice and easy. Um, and then the C total, or 1.2 for the, um, was the desired for the capacitor in the middle. I've just rounded that up very subtly up to 1.5 and that seems to work well in circuit. So we'll leave with that. And then in terms of the C total, I'm going to call it C total for the parallel values here. It turns out to be um, 34.2 picofarads. So what I'm going to do in order to tune this, I'm going to have... Um, a small trimmer capacitor uh, in parallel with a fixed uh, capacitance. Um, I've got some roughly 30 picofarad um, trim caps, um, which you might have seen in circuit. So I'm going to have a 12 picofarad in parallel with that. Um, again, we've touched on this before. When you are using the oscilloscope and you're plotting um, or you're tuning up that particular um, bandpass filter or those tuned circuits uh, you want to you definitely want to make sure you get a double hump for every 360 degrees in other words a full rotation of the trim capacitor and then you can guarantee then that you're actually at maximum um, maximum um, pass I guess lack of a better term but tongue tied there if you see a single peak then you've either got um, too much or too little depending on where you are in that 360 degree rotation as it turned out in my particular case, uh, I ended up having on one side a 12 picofarad capacitor and on the other side I needed a 10 picofarad capacitor. Just to double check that when I was tuning each side in turn that I was definitely getting a double peak. Um, so that's what mine turned out to be. Okay, so that is essentially a quick rundown of uh, where we're at. Um, and like I say, the plan now is to um, is to uh, work on the transmit side of the house. So introduce those two uh, relays. Um, we've already got from the video a cover back uh, the driver uh, for the power amplifier. So that's all set up, ready to go. And it's just a matter of now of um, making up that IRF five ten. Um, single-ended um, uh, power amplifier, uh, give that a go um, and then that should be pretty well it. Um, do have the microphone uh, amplifier to make, um, just debating if I want to make that an electret 
or a, uh, a dynamic microphone. So we have a bit of a play around there. I might actually look to uh, re-emulate the amplifier that was used for the bass rig over here. Um, that works particularly well, but we'll just see what I've got away by um, my, in terms of microphones in the junk box. Um, noting, that, yeah, noting that I want to have a PTT, uh, obviously, and I'm sort of half tempted, if I get a light one, is to use a microphone with a built-in PTT switch. Um, and if that's a dynamic mic, then so be it. We'll, uh, we'll run with a dynamic mic. So we'll see, see how we go there. Anyway, I'll say 73s. I've certainly rambled on way longer than I wanted to. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll see you next time. Cheers all.